Hi everyone, my name is Augustus the Animator. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am teaching you how to do this lovely shimmering starry night sky with some shooting stars in it with a little added bonus feature if you continue to watch the whole thing. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're just going to be using fractal noise for the stars, um, just a really easy gradient ramp, and just like a moving shape layer for the shooting stars. So let's get started. I'm going to do Command Y to bring up a new solid, which I'm going to use for the background. Just do 1920 by 1080 because that's the size of my comp. Uh, call this BG. And on that, I'm just going to search for gradient and just do uh, generate gradient ramp because that's all that we need. There's a few different options there, but this works for what we're going to use it for. Um, I'm going to adjust these to the, uh, the start and end points of our gradient color. Maybe do something like that and do this top one as like a deeper night color. It's like purplish, bluish, something-ish. Um, we'll go something like that. And then this guy will do closer to like sunset color. Still nighttime, but maybe I'll do like a, even just like a lighter blue. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So that's good. We'll lock it so I don't click on it. And we will do a new solid, Command Y. We'll call this, I believe, stars, maybe. And then let's do, I'm just going to type again because it's easier than searching. Fractal noise. Noise and grain, fractal noise. Um, this is another tool, sort of like Turbulent Displace, where it has a thousand different uses if you mess with the settings. Highly recommend exploring fractal noise. Uh, but we're going to create some stars with it. So let's do... Well, basic might even work. So what I'm first going to do is... Under Transform, do Scale, scale this down so it's just a little bit finer looking. And then I'm going to turn down the brightness and up the contrast. And let's see, brightness even lower. Scale, I think, needs to be smaller. And yeah, you can see how already it's going to look, you know, like it could be a star. Sky. <laughs> a sky filled with stars. Um, let's do, I wish I could say that I knew precisely what all these parameters do, but I don't. Um, so I just recommend messing around, which is what I do every single time. <clears throat> and there's just so many options that will, there's just so many different combinations that you can do so many different things. So again, I, you know, I've been stressing that because it's true. It's such a good thing to, uh, to play around with. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, uh, we're gonna start with something like this as our base. So you can kinda see, you know, it's kind of, you'd have to be like away from a city to see stars like this in the sky. But it's totally possible. I might actually bring down the brightness even a little bit more. Make it somewhat more believable. There we go. Um, and we'll click on our stars layer. And under mode, or blend mode, do add. And bam, you have a sky. With that, um, we have some stars. How wonderful. I think, actually, let's see if we do evolution. Yeah. So part of me is making this up on the fly. Um, so bear with me. But I'm just going to uh, keyframe our, our evolution, which is just going to like randomize, kind of, this already random... Um, arrangement of fractal noise. So I'll just go to five seconds and maybe crank this like two revolutions and just kind of see what that does. So that feels like a lot to me, but it's kind of a fun way to get like a little bit of a twinkle happening. Look at that. It's a little um, fantasy ethereal or whatever you want to call it, but it's kind of cool. So, 
you know, do it if you want to do it. So I'm going to leave it because it's fun. And now I'm going to do a shooting star. Uh, okay, I'm going to start with a circle. And I'm just going to move the uh, anchor point to the middle by hitting Y to change it, to change my cursor so I can move this. Hit V back for normal. It's actually not that close to the center. Okay, V. Um, I'm going to, instead of, I want this to be a little smaller, but instead of scaling it, just because that can cause problems later sometimes, I'm going to go under Contents, Ellipse, Ellipse Path and Size, and just scale this down a little bit. Just so when I mess around with scale keyframes, which are going to, I can have them 100 as my base point, rather than like 89%, because that can just kind of like throw you off sometimes. Um, okay, so we have a little dot. Look at that. And we are going to, let's see, let's just put them over here. Make a position keyframe. Hit P for position keyframe. And I'm just going to go forward 10 frames by holding Shift Command right key. And we will move him over here ish. And these handles are here for my path, so I'm going to grab this and make it a little bit of a curve because most things in nature don't go perfectly straight. And... Whew, cool, that's a good start. Um, why don't we hit Shift S to bring up our scale property in addition to position. And let's, let's see. I'm gonna keyframe him at 100%. Probably like right here. Go back to this keyframe at zero, or uh, scale it onto zero to make a keyframe, because we kind of want them, you know, shooting stars just kind of like come out of nowhere. That's the effect that we're going to go for. And then go back to the last keyframe, make him zero as well. So let's see what we've got. Shoom. Shoom. Okay. And um, it's a good start. I think. Let me try moving that around. Yeah, okay, I kind of like that a little better, where it's smaller for a little longer, then big, and then quickly, more quickly disappears. I'm going to move this keyframe over one spot by hitting Alt, right key. Watch this again. Yeah, okay, good start. The way to really make this look like a shooting star instead of just a circle moving across the sky. Um, one thing you can do is click Blur right here. And in order to view that happening, you have to also click this button right here, um, which is really good because blur, motion blur, excuse me, slows down the processing speed a lot. So it's absolutely worth it to turn this off while you're working. And then um, when you render whether or not this is on, things that are ch checked with blur will be blurry. Um, but yeah, it just makes it a lot quicker to turn this off while you're still working. So, oops. Click that to make sure I can see it. Already it's, you know, it looks different. It looks faster and less like a circle moving across the sky, which is great. Um, but what we're going to do now, and in fact, I'll turn that off for now, is do effect time echo. And this is going to be kind of where the magic happens. Uh, okay, so this just leaves a trail of um, an object, basically. Uh, so you'll almost be able to see like a few frames at once. Mm, that doesn't really make sense. Basically, you should mess around with this and you, you'll totally understand much better than my poor explanation of it. Um, so you have all these different parameters, number of echoes. If I turn this up, you can see there's more of that trail behind it. And you can crank this up like really far. Um, let's go like here. Let's see if it go to the end. So yeah, the more you crank up, the longer the trail will be. And this is the amount of time in between each new trail. So like from this point to this point is 0 0.033 seconds, which is not a lot, but as you can see, there's still space between it. So this number is going to be probably always like very small. In fact, I'm going to make it, let's see, 0, .0 or negative 0 0.01. And even that that's not a small enough number because I don't want to see these like bumps. So let's do, let's add another zero in there. 
perfect. So this is now like real tiny. But if we kind of crank up our echoes, do that. Oops. Yeah, crank up our echoes. This is a lot, but since this is a fairly simple composition, it's not going to slow down too much. And starting intensity at 1, which is just means like full opacity basically. And then our decay, that is going to make, 1 is going to make everything like full opacity the whole time, I believe. And then if we, it's on a scale from like 0 to 1. So if we turn this down a little, um, they fade as they kind of like remain on screen or as they get farther from the original, I guess, um, which I think will work for what we're trying to do. And I'm just going to do it like a little bit. Um, I wonder what happened if I turned on blur. Is that too much? It looks okay. So it doesn't need to be much, but um, with the numbers that are on such a small scale, it's important to move things by like a little bit and it'll make a big difference. So you can, you know, get exactly what you're going for. So, see like even that slowed down. My computer is trash, but it still is a, is a significant computing power. So there we have like a thing happening. Not terrible. Um, and I think I would actually, I want the decay to be a little more. Oops, vice versa, wrong way, go this way. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to make his the maximum size of this a little lower because I thought it was a little thick. Shoom. Okay, not bad. And let's see, that really is almost it. I am going to duplicate this guy and do... Instead of white, maybe make it like a yellow-ish, but pretty bright still. It's just a small added touch, and it's actually like a little bit difficult to see. But we're going to do that. Click on this layer, hit U. And on this, for this scale keyframe, we're going to make this a lot lower. And actually, in order to even see this, I need to for sure make this like brighter. Brighter, and then... Another thing to do, or in order to make this like more visible, because it just kind of looks yellow now, um, the whole thing looks yellow, but also still super super bright, like brighter than this color. The blend mode, I'm gonna do maximum. Yeah, so that'll make it so it doesn't add and therefore kind of get blown out. And then it's always good to play around with these two because there's just a lot of there's just a lot of things. We'll do um, we'll do maximum, and then maybe make this back to the a closer, or the color that I had it at before. It'll just give it a little bit of color depth, make it a little yellow, contrast against the blue. And if you don't like it, you can do whatever color you want, because you have the power. Um, I am going to make this still a little smaller, because I feel like it's overpowering the white a little. Because I want it to just have like a yellow center kind of a thing. Okay, so that's basically all you have to do for a shooting star. It's just a moving circle with an echo. Not too bad. I may actually speed this up slightly. I'm going to select all of these guys. Hit Alt and the left arrow. Maybe do with these one. Yeah, not too bad. Um, I'll just cut these guys off here. And oh, actually, let's see. Yeah, okay. I think <clears throat> the thing that was bothering me about it coming to like too small of a point at the end, I'm just going to for the last scale keyframe, instead of zero, do like 20-ish. Um, and that I think looks a little like more natural to me. Uh, so yeah, so you have a shooting star, you have a starry sky that twinkles, how pretty. And I think just as one last little like bonus fun thing is just another way to use the echo. Um, I was messing around with this for my last Insta, Instagram post that I did, and I ended up looking like a little weird for that context, but um, I am going to 
just, well actually, yeah, I'll copy this echo effect and put it on the star layer, which is going to make this freak out a little bit. Um, and let's see, I am going to change these parameters. This will look a bit closer to that standard, or the default, which was, I think, this. Number of echoes, way less. Let's do like 10 for now. And we'll do add again. And then what we're going to do is rotate this. So you can rotate, not the whole layer, but you're going to rotate the fractal noise effect. Because um, if you rotate the whole layer, it's going to just like be weird and dumb. Like that. Not good. So we're going to rotate the, the effect. Uh, well, actually, we're first going to keyframe the rotation on the effect. Move it over. We'll just do to like one second for now. Let's do just that much. And if you do that, I'm going to, even before I preview, crank up these. Oh, God, it's, my computer's going to explode. And <clears throat> do that. And what you get is kind of a very particular look, but I think it kind of looks like a long exposure, like a star trail, like photography, which is super pretty in my opinion. Okay, so there you have our now rotating and shimmering and beautiful night sky um, with just a really easy fractal noise for these stars, a gradient for your sky, and to like a few keyframes with an echo effect on like a circle for a shooting star. So hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you guys would like to see anything else or if you'd like to see how I did the character from my Instagram post um, or if you have qu other questions on this that I didn't cover or if you use this and you want to post like what you did with it, that'd be so awesome to see. Um, so leave a comment, give me a like, give me a subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. And thanks for watching.